So you may be interested in finding some low maintenance plants that are drought tolerant, attract butterflies, save the bees, feed the birds, attract hummingbirds. What else can they do? Look pretty, be interesting. Man, that sounds like a lot. But what I'm really talking about is Florida Nita plants. And today I need to go buy a lot because I got rid of all the rest of my lawn. I'm over my grass, I'm done, I'm done. And I don't wanna just replace it with a lawn alternative. I actually wanna go and put in a really pretty wildflower native plant landscape. So what I'm gonna be doing today um, is I'm gonna be hitting up two native nurseries, Wilcox over in Largo and then um, Little Red Wagon over in Tampa. And I'm gonna be picking out a lot of plants. But what'll be good for you is if you're looking for ideas, I'm gonna be showing a lot more plants than I'm gonna buy. <laughs> In theory, that's the idea. So if you want to get some ideas of some native plants that may work for you, um, that can do all these great things, hang with me. Or if you just want to hang out and have some fun, we're going shopping. Let's go. I just did a really quick sweep of the place just so I get, a, get an idea of what they have here. Um, so I'm gonna turn you around. I'm gonna show you a lot of different plants. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the ones I'm gonna grab and then I'm gonna impulse buy a bunch. <laughs> you know, why not? So I know a favorite of people's is always to start with tropical sage. This one seeds, I will tell you a lot. I have this one already, which is why I will not be buying it today. But this is a good hummingbird, butterfly, bee plant. Very pretty. And it comes in a couple different colors. It can be this red, there's this white, and then there's also like a pale pink. I don't see any here right at the moment. And I'm not planning on getting any for my project, but this sign did have me double thinking that just because who doesn't love a clearance? Um, but I already have some, so I don't wanna just add more of the same plant. That was one of my goals for today was do something different. So no more tropical sage for me, but I would highly recommend it if you don't already have it. Oh, I found the pink ones right over here. And it comes to one of the plants I'm definitely getting, Starry Rosenweed. This is one of the ones I did want to grab. It's going to be a two to four feet. Now, when it comes to getting all these plants, I'm going to be getting a lot of variety and not necessarily a lot of any one type of plant. So for those who are looking for ground covers, another one you may want to consider is something like a Pineland Heliotrope. This is not for walking on ground covers, but like, you know, when you have those beds where you want to just put like a low growing flower, this would be a good one. And honestly, I've been thinking about, you know, these heliotropes, there's a couple different varieties here that these would be good to be putting on the edges of this project. Uh, but I'm going back and forth how much, I, I think I want to go get some of the bigger plants first before I start grabbing some of these. Here's another heliotrope. This is the yellow. Look how pretty that is. Ugh, super pretty. So another one, to, it's a low grower, six to 12 inches. So another one you might want to consider if you have an area where you need something to fill in but not necessarily walk on. So another I'm gonna be adding in, this is a host plant. This is partridge pea. So this is for all of our yellow butterflies and a few of our skippers and some of our smaller butterflies. I'm really excited for this one. It's got a different look. It's gonna add to the yellow of our starry rosenweed, but different texture. And that's one of the things I really wanted to do today was get different textures in and not just have everything look the same. Now you may be seeing this and go, what is this mess? This is graceful blazing star. It's two to four feet tall. This is gonna be so pretty. Oh my gosh, I've been wanting to get Blazing Star forever. So you can see some of the potting information. Oh, yep, yep, we're adding this one. For sure. Maybe we need two? Probably need two. 
But actually, I'm gonna mix it up and switch it over to Elephant Blazing Star, which gets a little bit taller, um, but it's got just a slightly different look. So we're gonna add this one too. One of the ones that I had a while back, but I think I killed it. This is our Azure Native Sage. This is gonna do well in my semi-shade area near um, near the Ponciana, because that area gets a lot more shade, so it'll be good for a sage like this. Ah, there we go. Get a couple. So we've talked about some of our native milkweeds before and some of the most common ones you can find for Florida are butterfly weed, our pink swamp milkweed, and then aquatic milkweed, AKA white swamp milkweed. But there are over 20 native species to Florida. And one that you can find, not as common, but you will find it is world milkweed. And this is one that, yep. Yep, I think I'm gonna add this in too. <laughs> if you're looking for one that's gonna be a great attractor for bees and butterflies. This is Bees Balm, AKA Dotted Horse Mint, native to Florida. I have this in my garden already. I would highly recommend it. It is gorgeous before it even puts on its bracts and it has a lot of texture and color and you can use it as an oregano substitute. This is hands down one of my favorite native wildflowers. This is, <laughs> it's called Leavenworth's Tick Seed, which is a terrible name, which is why I usually call it by its scientific name, Coreopsis Leavenworthy. It is so pretty and honestly mine has been blooming spring through fall and though I have a lot of it and I said I wasn't going to buy anything that I already had, this is one, I'll buy it again just so I can get it in the area for this next project. There are some definite Florida favorites hanging out up here from our native porter weed which is a trailing great ground cover. There's also, oh, I love beach mist flower. It's actually endangered in its native landscape in the Keys, but it's so pretty, bees love it. Dune sunflower, amazing ground cover. I can't think of anyone who wouldn't love it. And one of our native types of lantana, if you're looking for a low shrubby plant, this is the one that's called button sage. So if you've ever been wondering what the white one looks like, this is what it looks like. Super pretty. Oh, it's got like a little bit of pale pink. They're just so tiny and pretty and cute. So we're getting into some of the more shrubby plants. Uh, one that I have, if you're also looking for some additional native lantana, this is our other native type. This is Pineland lantana. It stays really low. So if you're looking for like kind of a low shrub plant for like the edge of a house, or if you've got like a border area, this is like a nice one. It can mound it really nicely. Um, but one of the ones that I did want to grab was, I think this is false rosemary. And when I was thinking about this project for this area, I was thinking more about silver tones, different kind of textures, and this is right up my alley uh, for what I'm looking for. So I wanted to get one of those, maybe two of those. And then I also wanted to grab, oh, look at these, Florida Penny Royal, super cute, super soft. What's over here? Oh, silk grass. Silk grass was one I've been debating. I have to think about that, maybe. Uh, Calamon or Calamanthia, this is one I have. Very pretty, smells gorgeous. Mm, get one, don't get one, get one, don't get one, get one. But I think this will be really nice with the false rosemary. Look at that color combo. It's a little bit greener with the silver. They have similar flower structure. Bees are gonna love that. Go for apples. I haven't read up on those ones. Huh. I don't know about that one. If you know about gopher apples, tell me why you love them. Tell me why you don't like them. <laughs> what do we think of that texture of silk grass? I think this will be a great addition to the area. Yeah, I think we're gonna try this one. I feel like I'm ending up with a lot of yellow, but I feel like this, with combined with some of these other ones, is gonna be super pretty texture-wise. You may be thinking, this is a grass? You are wrong. This is actually pine tree. This is what they look like when they're babies. And what's really cool about pine trees is they stay really low like this, and then they shoot up really fast. It's their way of dealing with the fact that we're a state that has regular fires, and so they evolve so that they stay low, and then boom, 
jump up five feet. This is one of the ones I wanted to get here. Scrub blueberry. Oh, they are so pretty. And I love how the leaves on scrub blueberries, so these are edible blueberries for us. They are, oops, is there a blueberry on here? No, just water. <laughs> but I just love how they have this like green silver texture. And then when the leaves, like, look at that. I love this. I have this in my yard. I'm probably gonna transplant some of it. But honestly, I've been sitting here going like, I feel like this just belongs in this garden. So I'm gonna add some to this project. Oh, I was looking to see if there were any of smaller versions of the dwarf blueberry and yep, yep, yep. We're getting railroad vine. Someone had given me this idea a while back that throw this in the middle of a native garden. So pretty. Do I want one? Do I want two? They're so tiny. We're gonna get two of these. We're gonna get two. These two have flowers. These two are coming home with me. Yep, 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 have to get them. Do we wanna grab one? Do we wanna grab two? I have three I can transplant at home. So I'm just gonna get one and then I'll try to transplant the other ones when I do this project. And that'll give us four. And I think they will be really nice mixed in with all this other really, really, really pretty plants. Look at all that texture. And if you're wondering, these will be purple. So we got a lot of purple, we got a lot of yellow. That's gonna be blue. We got the railroad vines that are purple. Yeah, a lot of yellow. I like yellow flowers. They just make me so happy. I am looking at this gopher apple thinking, is this the kind of thing I wanna try in this garden? So it makes an edible fruit that's really good for our gopher tortoises. Now I don't have any tortoises in my neighborhood, so uh, very unlikely this is gonna help any of them. Hmm. I think I'm gonna pass on this, but if you have an area that has gopher tortoises, consider gopher apple. It is hot. Hot, 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 hot. I just saw this and I am not been considering it. I've been wanting to get a Simpson stopper. If you don't know about it, Simpson stoppers, they are great for birds and get really cute flowers. They make an edible fruit for our migratory birds and, but they, they get a little bit bigger. And I've been thinking about getting one for a different area, but they have a dwarf one. And this really got me thinking, hmm, 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 Do I, do I, do I? I don't know. Oh, so what's really cool about these is they get really pretty fruit. Actually, if you want to see a Simpson stopper, I'm 99% sure this is a Simpson stopper. This is what they normally, you can see the size. And I actually have been thinking about getting one for where my lamppost is. Um, there's currently like a red crepe myrtle there, a red black, whatever color one. And I was thinking, hey, I could get this and kind of put it there. It'd be a nice statement piece. But then I've been debating because it might shade out the vegetable garden. But this, look at it. I mean, talk about pretty. And you see, here's the berries, the fruit starting to form. It is technically edible for humans. I don't think it's like a woo, yummy flavored thing, like where we would be like, yeah, I have to have it like a mulberry. Um, but for birds, really important. Um, but I've been considering doing something like this because, you know, having a plant like this near the vegetable garden, it continues to bring in my songbirds who eat a lot of the bugs. You ask, people will say, how do you do pest management? Birds. Birds are great for that. So, I don't know. May still go my original game plan, but ugh, it sounds like it can take some semi-shade. And that Ponciana adds shade. And I could put it on the far end. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. We'll find out by the end of this video whether I caved in on it or not. So for this project, we had been thinking about grasses. So this is purple love grass. You can see it's got like a very nice, this. So you can see there's different types. So here we got mooley, there's fakahatchee grass. So depending on what your project's trying to do, you know, you've got some different, so fakahatchee, mooley, uh, I didn't catch what name of this one is, but you got some different types of textures you can see here that you could create or you could do a mix of them for a project, especially if you've got a large amount of space. What's gorgeous about these, because you may say, why would you want to put these in? In fall, once these are established, just imagine the pink purple cloud. That's what they become. It's gorgeous. Gosh, I feel like I should get some. Ugh, I don't know. Okay, we'll come back to that. I'm sweating really bad. Yapon holly, 
natural caffeine source for Florida. Hey yo. Oh, so these are like a good box hedge alternative, it looks like. Huh, there you go. So if you wanted to like box hedge it up while being native, there you go. This is their larger plant section. So we're just gonna avoid this completely because I don't have that much space where it's gonna actually be something where I can stick like large trees and large shrubs, you know, the eight footers, the 12 footers. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff over there. Highly recommend Firebush, if <laughs> you've ever heard of it. Um, Firebush is one of the best starter native plants. Brings in, it does all the things. The birds love it, the bees love it, the hummingbirds love it, you'll love it. You can shape it like a tree, you can keep it like a low hedge, you can keep it like a box hedge, not box hedge, but you can keep it as like a pretty tree and hedge. You can do lots of good stuff with it. All right, I think there are a couple of things I wanted to grab from back here. And then we're gonna switch gears and go over to Little Red Wagon. Probably after, I, I'm gonna probably have to swing by home and drop some stuff off this. Oh. Impulse buy, this is one of them, right here. Rain lilies, by my work. For decade, I would watch rain lilies come in in an empty lot that I'm sure will get mowed over and built something on it. But I love rain lilies. They just look like this, like nothing, for a very long time. But when the first rains come every year, these little guys put up these pretty white flowers. So pretty. But the time of year when it's right before this will happen, a lot of the native nurseries run out because everyone goes out and buys them because they see them. So. They have a lot of them. I think we're gonna do a few of these. Two, three, five, 20. We'll just do a couple. Okay. You can see some of these have one, two, three, four plants in them. This one has three in it. So you may get more than one blossom on each of these. Squatch. Okay, got those. Now you may think I have wet areas. I have shady areas. This section is typically their wet, well back there I think shade and then over here is wet area. Um, and over here they have lizard tails. Oh, I've seen these out in just pastures. They are so cute. Oh, one of the ones that I really have been loving and I've just been debating is this river oat. I really want to get it. <laughs> That's one I've been thinking about. Rouge plant over by the shady area. That's a big maybe. Ugh, just so much stuff. Cause the one end is kind of shady in this where we're gonna be planting and the other area is very sunny. So I kind of need some of these plants that are gonna do okay in the semi shade. Do these ones do okay? Come from moist shady. See, the thing is when they say moist shady, because I run my sprinkler still, these might actually be okay. Yeah, we're gonna try one of these with our, our blue sage. I think that'll be good. If you're looking to kill your grass, milkweed. Milkweed, oh look, 10% off if you buy an entire tray, that's a deal. And then you got sunshine mimosa back here. Look at that, who doesn't love sunshine mimosa as a ground alternative? And then there's scorpion tail back there. I have scorpion tail in my yard, you can check out there's some videos. This is creeping sage. This is what I'm thinking um, behind my ponciana and between my bananas I'm gonna get, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna just focus on the front strip. That's that scorpion tail. Frost weed, that gets really tall. Only five, four to five feet. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Maybe Christmas berry or something. There's one that gets taller than most people. Aw, oh, this is pretty. Bushmint, that's cute. I had something, what was it? I feel like I'm missing something that I was definitely planning on grabbing once I saw they had it. And it was over here. What was I? <gasps> Woodland phlox. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? There? Is it there? Native ground cover. Good filler. Different color for us instead of the yellow. Yes! Woodland phlox. This is like when you drive on the highway and you're like, what is that bluish color? Especially if you're in like central North Florida. Woodland phlox. They're gonna only get like a foot, foot and a half tall. And it prefers full shade, partial shade. This is one that I wanted to go put by the blue sage. And if you kind of noticing a pattern, the blues, tend to like the shade more. <laughs> the yellows and the whites tend to like the sun more. Interesting. Um, how many am I getting? One, two, sprawling. I'm always like, let's get three of something. Cause three, cause I can kind of work the other plants in between for the shady side. Am I gonna have room on this cart? Who knows? But whatever. Oh my 
goodness. So many questions from, is this enough? I mean, I'm sitting here going like, I don't think so. Cause this is about the amount of plants I got when I did the original wildflower area. And that I would say is a third the size. Now I do have three scrub blueberries that I will be pulling from my own yard from other sections of moving. I just don't know if I do I like I have enough wildflowers here. Do I need to grab more. What will Ben say when he sees how much I spent? I don't know. So many questions. Okay. I I think I think we're gonna grab a Simpson stopper. I think we're gonna go grab some mooly grass because when I do go to Little Red Wagon, they don't carry as many of the grasses. That's kind of one of the things about native nurseries. They can sometimes specialize one area versus the other. Um, and because Wilcox is associated with um, doing landscaping, they carry more large plants, landscaping plants. You may think, well, that sounds better than Little Red Wagon. But Little Red Wagon is, um, is all into butterflies. Every, they're all connected with like the Tampa Bay butterfly gardening community. So all of their plants, like 90 something percent of their plants are native. They don't have bananas and stuff like that. One, two, almost everything they have is related to either hosting butterfly plants or supporting butterfly plants. They do a lot of work against butterflies. So I can often get like host plants and butterfly plants that I can't find here. So both have their really good points. So it's just kind of like, what do you want to get? So while, so while I know they carry like some mooly grass, like I don't know if they have Elliot's Love grass and some of the other grasses. And I know they don't have Simpson stoppers. I don't think I've ever seen one there. So I think I'm gonna grab those and then we will head out and start going to Little Red Wagon so we can get more wildflowers. Cause that's where there's some other wildflowers that I wanna grab that I know they got every time I go there, I'm like, ooh, ooh, I want to get those. So, okay, so let me wrap this up. Let's get going over there. So I was heading to the cash register, but I got caught by a couple more plants. So I'm grabbing a salt and pepper, um, which is a really good pollinator plant. I grabbed a couple of the white heliotropes for some ground cover to fill in in the areas that are sunny. And then I saw this green eyed flower but it's really really pretty when the flower fades let me see if I can show you guys this and then Adam who works here pointed out that it smells like chocolate which facts it does so he then was like if you pair it with the vanilla <laughs> the vanilla plant is native and you got chocolate and vanilla so I don't even have space in the wagon anymore. So we're gonna check out with all these fabulous, fabulous plants and we'll do like a full summary at the house because I think I've covered everything with you all that I grabbed, but who knows? Okay, <laughs> let me go pay for all this. So we're all loaded up and you can see my back seat is completely crammed. My children apparently turned into shrubs. <laughs> oh my word. And my front seat. So that means that all I can buy can fit in this front seat and what little space I have in my trunk because there's a stroller in my trunk. So that's it. There's not much I can buy at Little Red Wagon. Just still though a lot. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Oh, but it smells so like here's the thing though, is it smells like dessert in here right now. Between the vanilla plant, the um, what are they? Green eyed what they're called green eyed somethings we'll, we'll look at it later that smells like chocolate and then i got the false mint and the calamanthia with their mint smell it smells like <laughs> mint chocolate ice cream in here <laughs> so good so good okay let's go over to little red wagon and let's go get um some more wildflowers because this is this is gonna be oh man this is gonna be good i'm super psyched now if you're feeling like super inspired right now and you're like hey I want to get all these plants too, Jacqueline, but there's not a native nursery near me. But I know many of you, when you tell me where you live, you live within an hour and a half, maybe two hours of these places. There are other native nurseries, but with some of the native nurseries, you can put the orders in ahead of time. Like you don't have to like show up and then be like, oh, they don't have the plant. Like I know Little Red Wagon, you can order 
and pay for it online and then tell them the day and time you're going to go pick it up so that they have time to pull your whole order together they'll hold it wilcox does the same thing and then you can just make the trip out here or to whatever native nurseries closer so don't just let the fact that like it's not a 10 minute drive like a home depot or a lowe's be the reason you stop like make it a little half day trip get your buddy get your spouse and like just put the order in ahead of time that way you get the plants that you know you really 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 want and then you know impulse buy once you get there because that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get going to Little Red Wagon. Okay, we're across the bay. Plants had a lovely trip across. They got to see the water views. And now it's time to go hit up the Tampa Bay Florida Foundation. Little Red Wagon. And grab some more great pollinator butterfly plants to add to all these fabulous plants. I'm super psyched. But I can only get so much. Ah. Ugh. This is a plant that I would love to get. Look at this, this is the native tea bush. So pretty, but it gets 10 feet tall. I wonder if this would be a good one for up against a house. This is very, very pretty. And look at the flowers. See these? Super cute, super pretty. Lovely silver tone, very pretty. Oh, beach verbena. This is so pretty. I have this in another area. And there's that Pineland heliotrope again. Of course, my favorite. Look at that Coreopsis. It's like starry rosenweed again. So many cute ones. Oh, they also have the Dwarf Simpson stopper here. What's this? Is this tropical sage? Yeah. Tropical sage. Oh, this is a tick seed um, lancelata, the Coreopsis lancelata, which is similar. I think it's got a yellow center versus the Coreopsis lemon earthy. Wild lime, if you're looking for getting the giant swallowtail. What else? Oh, wild petunia. This one's super pretty. I already have this one and it's doing really well, so I don't want to add more of it. There's our native wild plumbago. Cute, cute, cute. Oh, frostweed again. Frostweed, shiny coffee, sea purslane, frost aster. Oh, that's cute. Hmm, frost aster, maybe. Elliot's love grass, looking very cute. Fringe tree, horse tail. Oh, this is just like very pretty. If you've got a wet area, very interesting, pretty plant there. Ugh. One day, oak leaf hydrangea project. I want that one. It's looking a little sun stressed. Oh, blue ocean morning glory. I have that, it's so pretty. Oh, that railroad vine, we just got some of that. But where's the one that I want? Stokes Aster. Stokes Aster is a really pretty border plant. This is native, I think, to the very uh, northern parts of Florida on the panhandle. Really pretty. Some stopper. Narrow leaf ironweed, giant ironweed. Nope, nope. Gold flame honeysuckle. Carolina jessamine. the one that I want. Golden Creeper? Nope. Nope. No. Oh, who is this? Blue Sage. Oh, is this the same Blue Sage? Oh, it's just a little leggy. That's all. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? Who we got over here? Beauty Berry. So pretty. Have this in my yard. Edible, edible fruit to make a lovely jam. Our native Fiddlewood. Look at those berries. Has some really pretty flowers. Too big for what we're doing today. What do we got? Yapon holly again. Coral bean. That's not coral bean. What is that? That's something else. Ow. Jack in the bush. I don't know that one. Who are we? And what are we? This is pretty. <gasps> Scarlet hibiscus. Oh, these are so pretty. <gasps> they have it. Oh my gosh, look at that. I don't think this is at all appropriate for this project, but man, oh man, pretty, pretty, pretty. Oh, five to eight feet, dies back in winter, full sun to partial shade. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh, so pretty. Firebush, I can recognize firebush just by its leaves now. <laughs> I love firebush. Coonty, water hyssop, ooh, golden ragwort. So I swear, 
some of these names are like the worst names ever. Do not sell the plant. The plants are gorgeous and they have these names that just sound like ragwort. Why? Tall mallow. Oh, short-lived perennial. And if you don't know a lot about uh, native plants, if you're gonna purchase in person, they're so great about doing stuff like this. So you can just quickly kind of get an idea of some, some things that you can do without being like a plant expert. There's those river oats again. I want those. Who's this? Lakeside sunflower. Cute. It looks like that's just starting to open. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, narrow leaf yellow top. Love this. Blazing star. Oh, we got some smaller blazing stars that are about, they'll become big. There we go. Look at that one. Which one? Oh, it looks like this is the graceful one. They have it here too. And spiked blazing star. Very cute. And sunshine mimosa. <gasps> Look at our black eyed Susans. Looking so cute. And all the milkweed. They definitely keep very stocked on milkweed all the time. When it comes to milkweed, I feel like I never have an issue finding it here. Wilcox, like, it just comes and goes. Um, they just, they carry the inventory, but here they carry it, like, 10 times the amount of inventory when it comes to milkweed. And that has to do with, like, what their different focuses are. So, yes. Milkweed galore here. Let's see. Necklace pod. What we got? Beach morning glories. Aqu more aquatic milkweed. Ah, oh, my Coreopsis. I love ya. Florida peperomia. Don't tell me they ran out of the thing that I was thinking I was gonna get. Joe Pieweed. This is one I was thinking about. Oh, but it's gonna get so big. I am definitely starting to melt. It is very hot out. <laughs> it may be almost fall, but it is definitely, ugh. So <laughs> I'm gonna grab a cart so we can start grabbing some of the plants. The one that I was really looking to get, it's similar to salt and pepper and like flower structure. It's called, I think, Folox, pH. O-L-O-X, I think is it, or Phalox, something like that. And I, it's usually over where they had some wood, was it wood sage or uh, blue sage? And I don't see it there today. And I'm kind of looking around for it. That was the one that I like really, 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 really wanted to get. And I, they've had it every time I've come here, but I guess not today, which is okay. Um, so we're gonna grab some other wildflowers and some other pretty things, you know, to mix in because yeah, I think I'm, I'm like super like, should I get the Joe Pie weed? It is big. Like when it gets going, it's gonna be like really big, but not too big. I mean, it's gonna get tall. It will definitely be something my neighbors will be like, and while I love to challenge <laughs> their expectations of what's pretty, I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be gorgeous though. Like. It'll be, I mean, they're really pretty. There is a native gardener that I've watched on TikTok. Uh, he's up in Georgia and he was showing his and I was like, that's really pretty. So we're definitely gonna get some of that. Uh, what you may be wondering is, is I've talked a lot about native wildflowers and you're probably like, why aren't you getting more milkweed for your area other than like the one um, twant or whirling milkweed that I grab? And the reason is, is I've actually done some propagating of my own milkweed. So I have some pink swamp milkweed and some native butterfly weed to go into the area. So I've got six of those. So I don't want to go, you know, buying more when I really don't need to buy more. So no more milkweed for this year. Maybe I'll need to grab more for next year. So, okay, let's keep going. I am going to get purple coneflower. Um, the landscape guys ended up killing the ones that I did buy. So we are going to get some more for the area. So I just asked Megan and she found one of the ones that I was definitely coming for, which is I know I, I totally had it wrong. Pale of Fox. This one, it, I know it's going to get really tall, but it doesn't get very bushy and it gets this very interesting flower that I would be very excited to add to the garden. And I know butterflies will love it. And another one we're going to add, not pink swamp milkweed, but this is actually cardinal flower. This is definitely a hummingbird's love. Very pretty. It will handle full sun to uh, partial shade. So this will be good as we get into that transition point. So I'm gonna grab some more of these. I, the area I put last time, not as good for those, but I think I'm gonna grab all of them. <laughs> we'll take all three of these. But once these cardinal flowers start coming out, oh, they're so pretty. And I think with the uh, blue sage that we've got going, this will look really pretty. This is one of the reasons I like 
Little Red Wagon is they actually will test out their plants. So they have the host plants here, but once the butterflies start closing, they test out different wildflowers down here so that they can give really, really good advice about what things the butterflies like and don't like. That's Megan. <laughs> okay, crazy name, but gorgeous flower, Sneezeweed. And I love this texture that goes on with it. Yeah. So you can see it gets those flowers. It likes kind of sandy, dry soil. And that's the cool thing about native plants. You feel like you have bad soil. Well, they like that bad soil. This is a very pretty structured plant. Uh, I don't know, I'm debating. No, 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 maybe, yes. No, maybe, yes. We're gonna put a pause on that one. <laughs> so I was just walking by, I got distracted by the sneeze weed, but then I saw this out of the corner of my eye. Sky flower, oh my goodness. Full sun to partial shade. Oh, with the woodland flocks. What do you think? What do you think? We're getting it. Okay, bye bye. Got another one of these. Is there two of them? Two. Bam. Done. Uh oh. We're almost out of space. What will we do? I don't know. Yay. Oh, here's, I think, the one I originally had thought about getting, which is the marsh rattlesnake. This is not as pokey. Not as pokey, three to feet tall, one foot wide. I love the look of this. We're gonna get these. Yep, look at that, isn't that pretty? It's like, it's just, I love, oh wait, that's probably not about the best one to show you. This is probably better. It gets like this bluish tinge. I just think mixed with some of the other really pretty flowers, that's just gonna be such an interesting piece. And a lot of what I wanted to do was the textures, but I just, the other one, the leaves down here were so pokey. And with the kiddos and the dogs, I'm not gonna do it. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna get two of these. Okay, so this is it. The wagon is full. I think that's all my car can hold too. So we're gonna pay for this and then head home. And then I will do a final show you of all the plants because even I'm having a hard time keeping track of all the things that I bought at this point. Who needs a garden in their yard when they can have a garden in their car? <laughs> Way too many plants. Okay, we are home. There are many, many, many plants. And I've now walked Ben through all the things that I've bought. And he for, it literally said, when you originally showed me, it didn't look like that much, but now that it's all spread out, oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> so here we go. So here's kind of the general groupings I'm thinking. There's gonna be a wildflower section with a lot of these tall yellows. So you've got mooly grass here which will help with some of these top heavy plants that are gonna bend, eventually fall over. And I know you can't really see some of these yellow flowers because of the dune sunflower behind here, but we've got our starry rosenweed up here. And I really, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I love how these look when they're faded. Look at that, isn't that just pretty? I think that's gorgeous. We have our, I think this is the elegant Leatris blazing star. Um, so we've got two of those. And we've got our graceful blazing star, so it'll just be a different texture. And we'll see how we mix those up. Our favorite Coreopsis Leavenworthy. Look at how cute. We got two of those because I couldn't wait to propagate my own. That's just an impulse. Then we have our Pelophlox, which is hiding in here because it's such a lean right now. Um, this, when it gets flowers, it's um, similar in style to the salt and pepper, which I also got, but it's much lower for the salt and pepper. But this will be a taller version. Um, and we need the mooly grass to help support that guy because. He's just, he just, he just, he's got a lean right now. He's got a big lean. So we got those, got those. Okay, so then we have our Pineland Heliotrope. So these Pinelands, yes, white Pineland Heliotrope. So I'm thinking these might get mixed in with this section along with our native purple Echinacea, AKA purple clone flower, our salt and pepper plant, um, the ever, also known as Everglades square stem. But look at these, aren't these pretty? It does look like salt and pepper great attractor for pollinators. And you can see we got some more rough texture, but that's okay. We like a little bit of difference. We have our rural milkweed here. And then we'll also be mixing in butterfly weed and native swamp milkweed that I propagated in this, probably with this grouping. We might add in the rattlesnake master. Don't know if that will go with these or here. I, I got, I'm not sure where stuff's gonna go, but I just tried to group things that I thought kind of go together. This section is my shady section. 
that sounds so bad <laughs> but my shade section as in these will be in the semi shade area probably more towards that end where the poncienna does a lot of shading out so we've got in the back three cardinal flowers these if you remember last year we had a, a set of these beautiful red flowers attractor of hummingbirds which we know we want so we've got three of those then here with a different texture we've got our azure blue sage we got two of those in the middle here rouge plant which we know the birds like and it's a good shade plant then sky flower <gasps> the flowers are closing up because we're towards the end of the day but they are beautiful and you'll notice a pattern we got a lot of blue when it comes to our semi-shade location so two sky flowers and then we have three woodland phloxes which will be a bluish bluish color bluish color so a lot of blue with a dash of red in the berries right here from our rouge and then we'll get some gorgeous red from our cardinal flowers soon so that will be a grouping of stuff that will end up down yonder where we know gets more shade for the day we of course got our dwarf simpson stopper which should be setting very soon for the fall will give us a little bit of help for our birds we love helping our birds and then we have our our dirts uh, dirts our dessert pairing so this was our chocolate and vanilla so we have vanilla flower and then we have our uh, green eyes here and again another plant that looks really really good when it's faded look how pretty that is but also pretty when it's not faded so what I'm also thinking, with, along with a section of all these wildflowers, is I'll probably start the railroad vine and put the, um, oh, what are they called? Rain lilies in with them somewhere. Very full sun locations. I think if I remember correctly, the railroad vine can get about 20 feet long and it'll wind between all the different plants. So I think it'll be very pretty. And the rain lilies, they're gonna be really not noticeable until it's time to notice them. So very excited for those. Then of course we have our partridge tree, which is the host plant to so many different butterflies. Very excited for it. And what we're gonna do is we'll have to figure out a location for it, but it'll be a nice add in, different texture. And then we got our Joe pie weed, which will get pretty big. It's gonna have a nice, beautiful bloom on it. So that'll be a really pretty add in. Then we kind of have these, I don't know, what do you wanna call this? The scrub land areas, which are scrub blueberry. I've got three I can relocate to kind of mix in with these. Then we've got our false scrub mint, our calamanthus, and the silk grass. I feel like they add up some really pretty silver tones and some nice white, silver, light lavender kind of look to it. So this for fall for the birds, and this will be for the spring for birds. So these plants combined are going to give a lot of berries for them along with that rouge plant. So we've got a lot of different things going on that are going to add you know, food for our birds, food for hummingbirds, and food for the pollinators. And just look at, like, when you come down low here, we just have so many different textures, heights, flower shapes. This is gonna, I'm just super excited for this. I am so excited for what this is gonna be. And then over time, I'm gonna add even more flowers in because why not? Oh, we've done a little bit of organizing of the plants, but really what we have to do next is get these all installed. And that's what's gonna be up next is the entire laying out designing and installation of these plants but if you're too excited to wait for this then go ahead and check out this which is our florida native wildflower project and this our florida native plant landscaping project okay i'll see you soon bye <laughs>